afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon and Express live on SABC3. I'm Bonnie Bully. This is our fave chef, Clem. And it's cook-along day, and it's sure to be hot in this kitchen today. I, I hear there's bricks involved. There, there are bricks involved? Why are there bricks involved? Uh, hot bricks. Are we gonna, we're going to do just... a, bit of a, a bit of a technique on cooking chicken with bricks. So at home, right now, wrap your picking, brick in foil and get it in the oven. Did you warn everybody about this brick thing? I don't think you can warn people enough about bringing bricks into the kitchen. So basically, guys, your brick is supposed to be already wrapped in foil and been in the oven for a while. Yeah, to ready get to nice be, and hot. Ready, ready I'm going to teach you how to cook chicken the best way possible in a pan with a brick. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not joking. Okay. So this is what we're making today. We're making ikota. Okay, and we're making two types of kota. There's a Russian one uh -huh. and a chicken one. We're going to do right? a take on a Russian one and then we're going to do the chicken one. We've got some amazing people in the kitchen today, so we're all going to get involved in this. It's, it's going to be messy, it's going to be spicy, it's going to be just crazy. It's going to be crazy, it's going to be lit. Now, the keyword for this recipe is dinner. SMS that keyword to 33650. There you'll receive the link to the recipe and the list of ingredients. Um, SMSs cost 150, no free SMSs apply. What are our ingredients? So we're going to start off with our take on the Russian one. So get your Russian, get your Frankfurters, whatever you use today, get that ready. Get your bread ready. I mean, kota without bread? Nah. So yeah. get, your, get your brick in the oven, guys, again, I'm not joking. Get your brick in the oven, and then we're going to make a delicious, tangy salsa, like kind of a, a s'more, we say in Cape Town. So it's going to get your onion ready, your tomato, your chili, and your and garlic. And your potatoes for chips. Of course, you got to have chips Absolutely. in there. Absolutely, so exciting. And remember to enter our cook-along competition, cook your favorite one of these two gotas, snap a pic of your final dish, and head over to our Facebook page. There you'll find a competition post where you can enter and stand a chance of winning a thousand rand Woolies voucher. And do remember, we are streaming live on YouTube. And of course, I'm told that the quality on YouTube is almost better than TV quality. So stick around for that. Today, we're invited We've invited two guests to join us for our cook-along. They also happen to be friends. Actor and comedian Thomas Gomete is popularly known for his role in A Place Called Home on SABC One, as well as a role in the sitcom Single Guys. TV personality Scoop Marcatini used to host The Street Journal on SABC One, and he took over from Trevor Noah as a host of The Real Goboza in 2008. Together with Mungile Khatu, they started their own production company and created some of South Africa's best love shows, like the reality series Forever Young. Wow, here they are, the men themselves. How are you? Yeah, they, they were boys, boys, two men. Yeah, boys, two yeah, men. Wow, do you guys, are you guys feeling like men right now? Like you're feeling grown? I Ge just in general in life. I definitely am feeling grown. In my age, I feel like I'm still a boy <laughs> in my little habits of life. But uh, yeah, 35, uh, you can't look at it as a, as a small thing. No, it's not a small sure. thing. And yourself? I mean, Are I you still... feeling like you've adult, you're adulting properly? No, not, adulting. not at all. <laughs> Far from it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially seeing you now feel like a little boy. You know what I'm saying? So, Are you just going to keep throwing jibes at the Bonnie? The whole time. Bonnie, the you should be wearing a ring. Please don't do it. I should, right? <laughs> I should. I should. I should. Cool. You, there's not, I, don't, I feel like there's nothing you guys haven't done. Okay, let's start out with you. You moved here from PE. Yep. What, did you have big dreams? Did you have a course charted in front of you? Did you know what was going to happen? What was your plan? I went to Durban first. I landed up in Cape Town, and when I got into uh, television while living in Cape Town, I knew that that's where I want to be. Because um, coming from PE, you really don't dream that far. Television is like a, a distant, distant thing from you. So when I got to Cape Town and I finally did my first link, I knew that this is the space that I want to play in. And then, having found out that, I knew that Joburg was going to be the place that I can have the biggest arena to play. And so that's what forced my move. And then meeting up with a gentleman that shared like uh, dreams and how did you guys meet? At parties, at work, at work, you which work, is really work party, same yeah, thing. working. But he left the, he left the uh, juicy part out of the story, which I'm not gonna let him uh, forget about. Yeah. He actually was a pastor before. He was a youth pastor. <laughs> You, you said, were, well, you were that juicy? Before, it's juicy, though. Okay. Well, you know what? A he lot was... of people were past. I was a, a, a minister in training. I, you know, really? Yeah, I, was, I learned how to church plant. I went through a ministry what? course, all of it. East, so Eastern Cape, clearly, it's the, it's the thing you have to I'm transition. I'm not even from She's the not Eastern Cape. Where are you from? I'm from Soweto. You see, you don't know your crashes. I'm getting interviewed by my crash, but anyway. <laughs> 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 so you started out in comedy. And you're acting now, in and acting, you're producing. Actually. But I started writing comedy, but only once I studied acting, I had the confidence to now perform that written comedy that I had. So before, it was just like jokes on paper, and I was like, I don't know who 
who's going to tell these, you know what I'm saying, until I studied acting and then I was like, yeah. And do you have equal love and passion for all of them or does one stand out specifically for you? Definitely acting, you know. But I think like everything else is like when you're on, when you're on stage, you're playing characters. When I'm yeah. producing, I'm an actor playing a producer. I'm not really yeah. producing. He's you know? a great comedian. He's a talented yeah, actor. I've seen some of but one comedies. thing he really sleeps on uh, and doesn't speak about, and I think people should know about this as well, is what uh, a cute businessman he is. Wow. So he, he really doesn't mention that part out there a lot, but uh, I don't think people out there should be sleeping, yeah. Right. He's very, he's very, uh, he's very mm. sharp. Wow. So most of South Africa got to know you on street, journal. Yes. Oh, so that I was such it. a oh, sweet bro. <laughs> is that my camera? <laughs> <laughs> is that me? <laughs> Y'all see that? <laughs> A lot of people got introduced to you on Street Journal where you brought street culture to the forefront. What did that mean for you at that time? It was a huge deal for me because um, having, having to deal with musicians, um, getting to know uh, painters, sculptors, people who were involved in, in other forms of arts, you know? And then obviously getting to meet some legends that have, that have made Zanz Africa what it is. Yeah. So it was a huge deal for me. It was an introduction to what has molded South Africa on a cultural level to where it is now and where it's going. Uh, it was a great university, and I wish that a show like that could come back where it's something um, educational and entertaining at the same time. And I think you guys are doing a great job. I was just mentioning what a great fan I am and how much I learned from watching you guys wow, do your thing over here. Wow, that's awesome. Jeez, that's humbling. And he's not lying. Yeah? yeah he's not lying. Not for real. Yeah, no, better not, not be yeah. lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so you won two Golden Horns, one for Best Actor in a, in a Drama and yes, one for Best Actor in a Comedy. Yeah, yeah, what did those acknowledgements mean for you? Because sometimes actors have to go out throughout their lives reminding themselves that just because you don't get awarded for something, it doesn't mean you're not doing a great job and it's not about like longing for that you know, affirmation from the public. But what did it mean for you? Everything you just said, you know, it's like you don't want to want the affirmation, yeah, yeah. but when you get it, you're like, thank God I got it. You know, it's just like you're, you're like, on the right <laughs> track. You're not crazy. <laughs> you don't suck. All those additions you didn't get, it just meant you weren't right for the part. It doesn't yeah, mean you're on the yeah. wrong track. And it was just like for me to be able to wake up and like show other people, kids growing up that you can't study for it pay for it and make a success of it because apparently, you know, you can't make money from acting or apparently, you know, you yeah, can't do this and yeah. that. But it's just like you can make money from anything, plumbing even, or selling toothpicks, as long as you're passionate about it. So yeah. I appreciate the awards, yeah, man. Absolutely. Selling toothpicks, though? Yeah. Um, anything. <laughs> so I see your mom's your date. Was your, was your mom your yeah. date a couple of... And I was um, stalking your Instagram, you guys, as I do on a daily basis. And <laughs> so you guys are quite close to your moms. Yeah. And you credit them for a lot of support. Tell me about your relationships. I mean, the old lady, she was the first teacher. She is a teacher by profession as well. She just taught me a lot about how to maneuver in life. And just a nurturing woman, man. Like, whenever I got a hug from her, everything would be OK. Whenever I was upset, everything would be fine. Aww. And she's still that driving force of the family till today. And it, for me, especially at a point in my life, my dad was unemployed like twice. And she was the breadwinner at home. So she did that and offered the love and the nurturing, and mm. was there for the schoolwork. Like, I've got one son now, and I'm looking at her like, is you superwoman? Because yeah. <laughs> how did you do this yeah, thing? Yeah, we're well, all looking at our parents yeah. like, how I mean? did you guys do this? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, yeah. it's crazy. It does give us hope that we can do, but it's like, how do we even start being yeah. like you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So and yourself, thing. Thomas? I mean, look, I was raised by a single mom, and I didn't know I was a single mom raised by a boy guy until people were like you don't have a father she had held it down so well it just it was normal it wasn't like i i, I longed yeah, it didn't stand i didn't, out I didn't you. know that mm -hmm. you know and, until i was like okay when i go to the prize how oh, there's other guys there that look like you know yeah. fathers and i don't have one but until such time as you realize the sacrifices they're doing for you actually you'll never know what your parents you'll you'll hate your parents probably until you realize it dawns on you one day where after puberty that Oh, shucks, this is the life. This yeah. is the person who gave me life. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And Scoop, your radio career has been quite significant. I mean, you started out with Sis and Scoop. That was huge. People yeah, that was huge. People seem to never get over the wound of, of that show <laughs> not being because, around anymore. I think because of the, we had, and we weren't the first people to have it. I don't know. I don't know, actually, but a lot of people talk about our unsigned hour and how, because now the industry is, is made in a way that you only hear the select few of uh, music coming out of the country, even in a genre like hip-hop. 
You know, there's only a select few of people that break through. And with something as diverse and as popular as hip hop and as national or continental yeah. as it, you yeah. can be sure that there are corners of the country you don't get to. Right. And it felt like our show was that for a while, uh, where people would just come in and just purely based on your talent, you could go from a 14-seater of a taxi or in a car with your mates that you paid petrol for to get to Joburg, into the YFM studio, and you just had that one chance to rap at 16, and someone would look at you and go, like he said, you're not that crazy. Get in here and come wow. to the booth. So like I think eight mile of, of South Africa, basic, almost, you know? Absolutely. You could see them when you tune into the show. It was like a visual, audio-visual show on radio, man. And we did birth some stars out there, you know, shout-outs to Kid X, Smashes. Uh, they, they had their run in with, with that show. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we're also going to chat a bit later about your production company and also the business acumen that's gotten you to where you are and your partnership with Lumina. Might not Fatu. look like it, but. And, yeah, <laughs> it I might mean, not, I, but trust us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we trust. <laughs> and we're going to be making cottas in the kitchen, so um, you're not going anywhere. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember that for our cook along today, we're cooking two types of cottas and we have a Twitter poll running as well, where you can let us know which one you like best. So head over and cast your vote. We start cooking after the break, so stay right there, don't go away.